Good evening and welcome to Slipstream Media. My name's Ben and I will be your host. Um, I want to talk about something uh, and put a bit of meat on the bones to something that I heard from Ricky Gervais, which I think is, it, it's kind of, in, it's a really indicative and important statement of our time. And that statement is, just because you're offended, it doesn't mean you're right. And I think we can all agree of many instances where that's true in our lives. We have a problem with people being offended by everything. It's almost impossible to speak without offending anybody. And the trend of wokeism is effectively the police of offence. Or, uh, I mean, certainly the DEI arm is the police of offence. The CRT arm is the teaching of being how to be offended and about what you should be offended. And then you have queer theory and transgender theory mixing it up, uh, taking over the acronym, which is now 2SLBGTQQIA plus infinity. And that's the abridged version. Now, I think we've gone a bit too far there. Don't think anyone can disagree if they have common sense. Um, not everything our kids say is right. Not everything we get involved in. Not everything we talk to them about, they are right about. Now, comedy has come under assault until this year, really, where it's now been appropriate. The, the woke mind virus, the, the, it, it's dying out because they've gone too far as they always were going to and now um, most people go oh, no, I don't want that as part of my life on a regular basis thanks um, and I don't want it in my news world I don't want it in my personal life I don't want to talk to my kids and lots of people have lost their kids to the woke mind bit of the virus um, and I know well personally I have a family who have um, I won't go into detail but I have one particular person in mind uh, the idea that if you're offended that you're on the right side now the world generation uh, uh, profess tolerance but it's only tolerance if you believe what they believe now i'm a heterosexual 41 year old white man so they assume i'm racist i'm not racist at all i've done a piece on this but i'm a psychologist you can't be unconsciously racist or uh, subconsciously racist because the job of the subconscious is to bring your deepest desires into your conscious mind for your conscious mind to decide whether to act on them but yet these people get away with calling everybody racist or bigoted if they don't agree with their views they're the least tolerant group on the planet and that's shown in antifa who are anti-fascist and anti-racist yet they're using fascist and racist tactics to get their job done never works don't fight racism with racism it's not going to work it's just never happened in you know it's that mandela would be turning in his grave right now what's happening in the world what happened in south africa and what's happening in europe and the states and it's you know this culture war doesn't need to happen but our kids have been taught badly um but we have to protect freedom of speech, and that's under attack right now uh, in a big way. And in the biggest way, I think the US election is the most pivotal point in my life, um, and probably in in a long, long time. So certainly since uh, war, uh, the almost the Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis, but probably since World War Two, um, the it is uh, Donald Trump on the common sense logic and return to normality side and Kamala Harris on the let's throw the rule books out and see how we get on. Now, that's not going to work. Um, we don't need, we need normality. Trump has a record that's great in returning things to normality. She has a record that's awful and, you know, they're immigrant, uh, you know, the, the glut of immigrants. I mean, some say that they're reporting 8 million in the southern border, but I've heard officials say 11, 12, 30, up to 15. And, you know, Donald Trump's landed on 21, which seems to be an interesting number, because they're only talking about the southern border. They have a northern border with Canada, 
and then a uh, western border with, the, with, with LA, where a lot of people are crossing. So it's not just one border. But we have, we've had the same in England. It's, you know, an influx of immigrants, and it, it's not controllable. And that leads to a situation that could be palpably palpable and, you know, contestual in terms of people's views and values being very different from some other people around them. And uh, if in the case of the states, they're flooding with immigrants. It's, and migrant crime is disgusting. They've imported huge gangs from South America, and it's not going well. And it needs a reset. It really does. Um, now, you know, if just because you're offended by what's going on in Gaza, unfortunately, it doesn't mean you're right. It really doesn't. Because you call it a genocide, and it's been ruled as not a genocide. You call it an apartheid state. It was built by King David. And uh, Jerusalem was then built by King Solomon of the same line. You might remember David and Goliath. It's almost a thousand years before Islam came to be a religion. So to say it's an apartheid state is entirely wrong. It used to be called Judea, and it's in history, going back as far back as we, well, almost as far back as we go. Um, certainly from a monotheistic religious point of view, it's the first religion. So it's not an apartheid state. And, you know, if you decided to live a, a very, you know, in your face, um, LGBT type lifestyle, and you're you're making lots of TikTok videos. You know, uh, a great example is a guy called Jer uh, Jeffrey Marsh, who sets up he, he gets a kick out of setting up his his TikTok thing, going to restaurants on his own, basically getting misgendered because he looks nothing like a woman, and then calling it a dagger to the heart. And on several occasions, gets the manager involved to try and get the person sacked. And he has actually, to my knowledge, got at least one person sacked from their job for misgendering. Um, so he's he kept saying it was a, it's like a dagger to the heart every time. But well, why do you set yourself up for it? Um, it's not just because you're you think you're precious or you're part of a minority that you think can't be offended because you've already had offence in the past. Grow up. Each day you can be offended. You can't be offended for other people, though, and this is important. Offence is a subjective thing. If you say, I'm offended by that, that's fine. If you say, that's offensive to like the LGBT community, or that's offensive to black people, or that's offensive to Hispanic people, whatever you want to say, you can't make that statement. The only way you can make that a statement is if you've interviewed one of that demographic absolutely. Otherwise, you could say, you could say that could be seen to be offensive by LGBT or a black community or a Hispanic community, but you can't say it is offensive. That's only a subjective thing. And just because you're offended does not mean it's right, because the bulk of the world don't agree with Gen Z and their ideas, and it, they're offended all the time and they've not really put a good argument forward as to why they should be allowed to carry on in the way that they do. So, ultimately, offence is optional. If you take offence to something, that's fine. That's your business. It's not actually the person who created the content's business, unless it turns into something more vicious like hate speech or something like that. But if it's just conversational and you don't agree with the ideas of somebody, it's not their fault you get, you get offended. It's yours. It's an internal choice that happens in your brain. With that, I'll leave it there. Always a pleasure, never a chore. Um, let's get some good ed education going and let's get these kids out of this kind of easy lifestyle, no offence mindset that they seem to have got. So, see you soon. You'll be lucky this time, I'll be good.